Hey everybody, uh, today is Friday, November 17th, 2017, and this is the first week of the discussion group on Living a Course in Miracles by Kenneth Bopnick, the audiobook. And we are discussing chapter one, which is 35 minutes long. It's sort of an overview of the rest of it. Um, so yeah, how about everybody say where they're calling from, their name, and what they're excited about about today's call. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Viola Krebs from Salt Lake City. Um, I'm excited because um, I just love Kenneth Wapnick. I just learned so much from him, and starting a new a new uh, audio. I just want to hear what everybody's take is on it. Cool. Nathan, you want to go? Hey, Nathan Lively in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I'm excited today because I actually have been reading Gary's book a lot this week. Um, so just generally excited about studying the course um, because of that new book. The Buddha book? The Buddha and Jesus book? Yup. Oh. That's awesome. Yeah, I bought it on Tuesday, and I haven't looked at it yet, though. <laughs> but I got it on, um, on uh, Kindle. So. Oh, nice. I read, like, one page. So I've started. <laughs> it's going <laughs> to so. blow your mind. Oh, Talking you're probably aliens and, like, conspiracy <laughs> theories. Great. I am excited. So I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Angela Irving and I'm calling from a random parking lot in Lakeway, but I live in Austin, Texas. And I'm excited because um, Viola and I were just talking about this before. I, my only experience with Kenneth, Kenneth Wapnick is just kind of like little bitty blurbs from his YouTube recordings. And they, that was right when I first started looking at this stuff. So it was, seemed a little unattached like I didn't really it was kind of hard to in context relate it to other things but now that I've heard a variety of audio and um read a few things and started the course oh yeah I'm on lesson 27 by the way <laughs> oh um, wow that's great <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I'm excited because the audio that I heard it makes more sense and it is more clear like Pablo said last week um that Kind of objects really super clear about all the things that he says and clear yeah it just clears up a bunch of questions and stuff so yay so who wants to go first with their thoughts um i will go first i took a lot of notes <laughs> i thought it was yay <laughs> I, I wanted to remember some of these things that i really like but i think overall um with the first chapter i like that that can um made it so that you know why you're doing the course and what to expect as a course student because mm -hmm. when i did the course back two years ago it took me two years so it's been more than two years i used to like be like how can i live in this world and know what i know how do i mm -hmm. you know it just seemed like like i didn't know what to do with it and it would have been really great for me to have heard this first but mm -hmm. maybe it was meant for me to hear it this way much later and um so like out in the field how i kind of relate that is like so i was like religious catholic forever and then for like three years i didn't go because it didn't make sense to me so i wasn't really doing the course yet because i hadn't heard about it but then when i heard about the course it just like oh this is what i needed this is you know for my spiritual um involvement ev and um so just the other day, my little eight-year-old granddaughter said, Nini, how can you stop going to church? And mm. I said, well, um, and, and Randy said, Nini, that one's for you. You can answer that one. And I said, well, um, you know, you used to go when you were a baby. And she says, I know. How come you don't go anymore? Like, this was like a heart to heart. She said, because wow. I want to I go to church. Like, I want to go on Sundays to church. And I said, oh well doesn't your dad take you to church <laughs> and she's like no no how come you quit going and so i said well um it it wasn't serving me i wasn't like i, I gave her like a, an adult answer and she looked at me and says i don't understand mm -hmm. and i said well you know what i can start taking you to church 
like I'm totally okay with that now. Like uh -huh. I feel like I could go back, I could take her to church. Be, and this chapter actually, I mean, just listening to Ken kind of makes sense why I could still, my behavior doesn't need to change, but mm -hmm. I know I have my own spiritual um, knowledge or whatever that's totally kind of way off from the Catholic tradition. But I think I'd be okay with that, doing that now, now that um, I've come this far. But that was awesome. one of the things. Um, you guys go ahead because I, I don't want to take out everything because it was, <laughs> was kind of short. But how, how did you get named Nini? She, <laughs> that's what she named me when she was a baby. And I love I've it. I've never heard that. I love it. <laughs> so she calls me Nini. Now all the grandkids call me Nini. Oh. I love it because it's not real common. And um, it's just like endearment. But I would love to take her to church and just to to go back and be with the social aspect, you know, how, how Ken Wapnick talked about being with a religion is like, it's helpful. Was it, was it in this that he talked about that? I don't remember hearing anything about that. Okay. That's probably, I probably went ahead. Yeah. We'll talk about that later, but mm -hmm. anyway, he's like, there's a purpose for that. There's actually mm -hmm. a purpose for that, but it's not God. <laughs> it's not God. You know, mm -hmm. it's more for the so social funeral or, or baptism, wedding, it's just like, yeah. people need to be as a group. And there's, there's a reason for that, but, um, but it's not God, no. Hey, Viola, I just wanted to say that I, I had a similar experience where I think for the last couple of years, I've been really wondering what I should be doing about the course. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I like want more, like, I don't know, ritual, or can't I just like, burn some effigy and then like become enlightened <laughs> because there's like nothing to do you know so yeah really those last couple of books we've been working on and talking to Gary I think have really helped me answer my own question which is that you know you need do nothing there there is nothing to do no. and me needing to do something in the world is another chance for the ego to sort of disrupt Hmm. learning and and make it about doing something in the world and yeah. so me feeling like I need to change my behavior or not change my behavior either way so a lot of this um this book and and the new Gary book have been really helping me with that seeing how other people sort of um took non-dualistic ideas and made them dualistic you know like tried to bring the ideas from the course into the world and, and figure out how to make them work in the world, which doesn't work. So do you have kids, yeah. Nathan? Yeah, I have seven kids. You have seven kids? He's lying. <laughs> he doesn't have seven kids anymore. <laughs> you no, I'm trying to, re trying to reduce the number of minds splitting in this world. <laughs> so, so the thing is, is I, I'm going, it, when I start going back to church, it'll be to take Audrey because okay. it's not for me. Like, but sure. I, I would do it for her because I think um, she's got that curiosity. And if, like for me, if, if, you know, because of where I am right now in my spiritual growth, I had something to compare it to. Um, and I, you don't probably mm -hmm. actually have to have something to compare it to, but I, so that was, you know, for me, like for her, she wouldn't have anything to compare it to. How right. do you teach a child about the- Take her to a unity church or a Unitarian church. <sighs> yeah. Well, and for you, it seems like this is a chance for you to kind of go back and make that choice again and say, you know what? I can just be normal. And if my granddaughter asked me to take her to church, like I can take her to church. Like I don't have to change my behavior yeah. be uh, because of this thing. Yeah. So it feels to me like it's kind of, um like it's okay like like a newfound way i can live you know and not be fine yeah i feel the same way it's like i can change my mind and i don't about the world and not have to change the world yeah yeah cool so who are we on <laughs> it's your turn you're up Okay, well, I wrote notes, but uh, my I was gonna use my iPad as my note taking or note reading device so that my face wouldn't disappear, mm -hmm. but it hasn't 
like synced up with what I've written on my phone. So I'm going to have to like make my face disappear <laughs> while I. Okay. Oh, wait. Can you still hear me? Yeah. What will we do without your face? I don't know. <laughs> you have to remember what I look like, I guess. Okay. So um, I wrote, it's really interesting that people just disregarded living on earth. <laughs> Like, I hadn't really, I'm like, I'm glad he's talking about this because I actually had, well, I hadn't thought that people would just not, would not do that, but it makes sense. And I like basically, so, sort of similar to what you guys had said, I had that question, like, how do we live here after yeah. accepting the premise that this isn't real? It's like, yeah, how do you wake up the next day and brush your teeth? <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And then, um, the distinction between level one and level two, I thought that was really, really helpful. That yeah. like there are two different types of learnings that are like, yeah, teachings that are happening in the course. Um, level confusion, then, yeah, he mentions that a what? few times. Level confusion, he mentions yeah, that a few yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, Excuse me. And then um, it has nothing to do with behavior, just what's happening in your mind, but we think we covered that. Um, once my mind is healed, that's it. Um, it's just... It, that, that I don't know it kind of blows my mind a little bit that like once I don't know how to think about this you know like once I'm enlightened then there are no more people like I don't and then so it's like don't worry about getting other people into it because yeah. like that just I don't know that like messes with my head like don't worry yeah. about getting other people into it because everybody will get into it and everyone will be enlightened eventually so you don't have to do that but at the same time, it's nice to have people to talk to. I will say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but at the same time, if they're already kind of going there, then it's easier to get them into it, quote unquote. So I don't know. If you're like already there, you're already there. Anyways, um, then the problem isn't guilt. It's just that we've chosen guilt. Right. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. And that's, it makes me think of various Buddhist teachings. It's like, it's not a problem that you're suffering. It's a problem that you're suffering because you're suffering. <laughs> it's like, don't suffer because you're suffering. Just like accept mm -hmm. that you're suffering and then don't, don't let it go any more levels. It's kind of, yeah. Um, and then I like the, the Holy spirit doesn't care what you, you should eat for dinner. The Holy spirit cares about you changing your mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Angela, one of the things I'll, I'll just say real quick is that, um, I hear Ellis talking to her clients occasionally about how our biggest problem is fearing pain in the future and that mm -hmm. the way animals experience pain is it just happens in the moment and it's like mm -hmm. a thing that's happening and it's like information, yeah. but they don't worry about future pain. Yeah. And we do a lot of worrying about future pain. And I think mm -hmm. that is probably like 90% of my pain is like, what fear of the future and, and yeah so i think i think that's a lot of it too yeah what it's was the funny. last thing you said um the last thing i said was not the problem oh wait um hold on the holy spirit doesn't care what you're gonna eat for dinner it cares how about you changing your mind and uh, yeah. that was that was an interesting thing he, like i'll mention like it's always awkward when you're eating dinner with a Course in Miracles student who, when they close their mind, close their eyes and they like channel the Holy Spirit to figure out what they're going to, whether they're going to eat chicken or fish. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, that was, that was good because I had actually kind of every now and then been thinking about like, well, what exactly should I be asking for help with? But then I remember right, back that to, like that's the, part of level confusion too, right? Because yeah. at first you're thinking, oh, well, if there's no order to level of size of miracles, then I guess I should just talk to the Holy Spirit about everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, it makes sense. Like, it doesn't, I mean, I don't know. But then at the same time, like, if you're asking questions about like, well, what job should I pick? Or like, which you know which event should I go to and you know that's also worldly stuff but I mean I guess if it has to do with like how it's going to impact your mind it does make a difference so it's kind of hard to know all the time but I guess if you if you don't know certainly I suppose asking the Holy Spirit will be like okay I'll help you <laughs> so yeah and just because the Holy Spirit doesn't care about <laughs> what what kind of rice you're gonna have for dinner doesn't mean you can't ask if you want to yeah, it's not gonna hurt yeah. anyone <laughs> 
I think <laughs> well, probably the closing the eyes and channeling. I mean, it's like that's like being obvious. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, that's funny about it. You know. Yeah, I like the part where he says, "Being normal." I know, like, you don't have to normally tell people to be normal, but you have to tell Course in Miracle people to be normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. and he's funny. Wapnik is yeah. funny, isn't he? He is funny. And it is, it's, it's like, uh, you know, you get to a point where like, how can you be normal when everybody's so different, but then that separation and you want to be part of that, you know, it was just, it, it was like hard for me to, to figure that out. This was such a good chapter for that. Yeah, I think, you know, related to our first discussion about um, making it hard to live in the world and then like, what do we do? I think the struggle f for me has been wanting to be special so badly that I that I tried have tried to use A Course in Miracles to make my as another thing way to make myself special hmm. so I'm like yeah. oh now that I have this special information and I'm a special person I can't live like normal people oh that and so I think so, maybe yeah. that's where the struggle so, comes from for me so clever <laughs> yeah 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 I yeah I've always I've always felt the the urge to feel special because of how spiritual I am. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, you know, I think probably one of the reasons that I want to have a spiritual experience, like a mystical experience where I like see fucking halos and shit is that I, I wanted, I want that to be special too. Mm -hmm. And so, and, but you see it over and over again where they say like, you know, that could happen, but it might not. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I, oh, that's right. Um, I had a thought about the whole, like, what do we do here issue? Um, I don't know. Cause I, I, I just, um, found out that another friend of mine is, is, has been studying the course for a while, but kind of like is on a hiatus, hiatus with it. And we're like, I've, I've, I've added him to the group, but he, he doesn't know whether he wants to be on the call. Anyways. Um, we were talking about that very thing. He's like, I always wanted to know, like, what do I do? What do I do? And, I was thinking about that and it seems like in a way you're not supposed to try to change the world at all but I think education you know if you're in a position where you're helping other people learn things I feel like that's in some ways the closest way and personally I mean I, and maybe I'm just saying this because I feel like oh wait well I'm, I'm educating people so I think that that's a worthwhile endeavor you know it seems kind of like an alignment with with the Course in Miracles where people are supposed to be learning things that help them. I agree. And I think about that sometimes. I'm like, oh, I'm a teacher. I'm like Jesus or I'm like these people. But maybe that's just another way for me to feel special. You know, I think it's, I think people wanting something to do is how these religions got formed and how this, mm. these non-dualistic teachings got turned into dualism because they said, well, what do we do? And then someone who wanted to be special said, uh, I know what to do. Let's do this religion and we'll like, I don't know, collect turtles and like pray in this temple. So, so I, I agree with you, but at the same time, I think like the, yeah. what do I do question is, yeah. is completely specifically not answered in the course because they don't want it oh, to turn no, into it, it is. You've done the course, right, Nathan? Mm -hmm. You finished the whole course, right? All like all 365. In in the, I remember that this is this subject exactly because one of the teachings or one of the lessons was not to teach other people, and I was like, really, like not teach them? Like, huh. yeah, it's not our job to teach them. That's it's the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit's job. Right. Hmm. And so we only can work on ourselves. So it's, it's just, um, it's, do you remember what Wapnik said? Let's see on this. Um, when you meet someone that's like you, they'll, they'll recognize you. Do you remember? Oh yeah. That was a good quote. Oh, oh it was yeah. profound. It was profound. Mm -hmm. It was, um, well, let's see. I wrote, I wrote it down partly cause it was. So they will funny. recognize you, but then the people who are not, studying this oh, will yeah. also recognize you as one of them yes because okay so a piece that comes through you that people see ones who walk 
as as you recognize their own so though so i would recognize you as as my own because we're studying the same thing mm -hmm. and then those that are not like me will also recognize me as their own because of that piece that comes out the piece um they won't think there is anything different about us because there really mm -hmm. isn't anything different that's just like mind-blowing for me there's a quiet about you it, the what's different is how you are so mm -hmm. you can basically relate to everyone whether they're on this path or on this path just yeah by that way they feel about how you are that that was profound i had never heard that talk yeah that was really cool way. but i guess i mean going back to the whole um what do we do here kind of thing is i remember gary renard saying or maybe it was oh it was in the disappearance of the universe that one of them said you will have you know you'll have a job but that's just going to be kind of like your side job and basically your real job is to become enlightened um and so i mean in order to pay bills and stuff like we do have to do a job you know so as far as that's concerned it that's kind of what i was speaking to more than like oh well how will i how do i manifest the course oh. in the world you know, oh, right. like I was, yeah yeah and it's possible that you'll be in one of the lifetimes where you are an aesthetic but that'll be you know in the great minority it's a lot more mm -hmm. likely that you have a lifetime where you just you know a normal person that has a job and stuff yeah yeah <laughs> and every job every job in this world has to do with the human body like let's see um angela you are an opera singer right mm -hmm. and then i so, teach voice lessons to high school students mostly okay so so that's like like okay so you're still kind of catering to an art form mm -hmm. i don't know maybe yours isn't because i was like trying to think what job out here does not cater to the human body like well the vocal folds are part of the human body <laughs> yeah, they are. They, there is no job, there's not a job you can do on earth that does not cater to the human body like i sell vitamins that's for the human body uh you sing what do you do nathan i'm a wrestler pro wrestler such a liar <laughs> 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 no, I was thinking about this too, Viola, because one of the huge reasons that I've wanted to have my own business and be an entrepreneur is so I, I like in a word, you know, it's, I don't want to go to work. Yeah. And I've had a lot of, I've had a lot of difficult, complex, challenging, emotional relationships with work and people at work. And it's like, I love those jobs, but at the same time, I fucking hate them. So um, in a way, like me being an entrepreneur and having my own business where I get to work from home removed me from a lot of that conflict. And so as, as I was reading some of this, I was like, oh, I'm that guy that like, I quit my job and I leave the relationship when there is, you know, when the going gets tough. And so it was tough to hear that part in the book where he was like, you know, the answer is not to quit your job or leave your relationship because that's where the learning happens. Uh, like, that's right. Shut up, Ken Wapnick. <laughs> Fucking don't know me. <laughs> like the nurse he was talking about that, uh, that he gave a ride home and she mm -hmm. didn't have a job. <laughs> yeah. She quit her job. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely, I definitely work for myself because I don't want people to tell me to do either. <laughs> That's why I do it, work for myself too. <laughs> but it still caters to the body. What I do, what you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. The nurses at the hospitals, the doctors, they all cater to bodies. The taxi uh, cab drivers cater to bodies. <laughs> so that's what we have to do. Mm -hmm. I think, I feel like, I mean, it's hard for me to know for sure. And there's part of me that wants me to think this way and I don't really know, but like, I know that I teach these high school students more than just how to sing um, because oh, there's so much sure. that's going on in your head. It's like singing is 90% what's going on in your head. Oh, and wow. Then, yeah, it's, I mean, you have to kind of tell your body what to do, but it's so much what's going on in your head. And if, there, if there's anxiety, if there's 
I mean, any, so many things can be happening that day and just like a thought can derail you. Oh, and so wow. I, it's, I mean, I feel like there are aspects of mind training. Well, yeah, there are definitely aspects of mind training that I'm teaching. Them. Oh, and definitely. So, That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. I really like it. I really like the relationship that I have with them. So. Very good. <laughs> good. You're, living You're a life coach. I really am actually. <laughs> they should pay you twice as much as they do now. Then they wouldn't be able to do it. Oh. <laughs> they wouldn't? No. A lot of my students, um, and I would, yeah, they wouldn't. A lot of them, I mean, some of them would maybe, but I mean, I, I joke that I like pass as a therapist as well. Like I, I tell them that everybody gets at least one therapy lesson a year and one sick lesson a year. <laughs> 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 and some get more. <laughs> Funny. But yeah, and I, it's funny, I had one student say, oh yeah, I can just remind my parents that you're also my therapist and then, <laughs> and then they'll let me have lessons during the summer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Well, Nathan, I thought you were a singer too because you're with a microphone in this picture, which I really like that picture, by the way. Sound I am a singer, <laughs> just not professionally. Oh, you're a singer. No one pays oh, okay. me to do it. Sound engineer. No, I'm a sound engineer. I have an online school for sound engineers. That's what I do now. Education, y'all. Very good. All right, you guys want to hear my notes? Are you done, Angela? I'm done. Two notes. Number okay. one, even though your body may be an illusion, you certainly don't believe it's an illusion, and you're not asked in the course to believe it's yeah. an illusion. Yeah, that is our good. purpose is not to deny our body, it is to deny our interpretation of the body. Discuss. Yeah, that's really strong. That good. It's the most unworthy w form of denial. <laughs> right, yeah. Wow. I really liked how he cleared that up because it yeah. is kind of like, so I'm not here. Okay. So we don't have to deny our bodies or we don't have to believe it's our bodies are an illusion even if we know they are, which is kind of hard to put those two together yeah and i've definitely been guilty of even though i may not have said it to anyone out loud and there have definitely been times when i've been like oh, i'm feeling sick but i'm gonna justify my laziness of not doing anything about it by thinking to myself well i'm not a body so let's <laughs> let's see how far that gets me ah. <laughs> trying to manipulate the system <laughs> i'm not a body <laughs> All right. Um, note number two, we have to ask for help in seeing the world differently. So this has been big for me in the last couple of years too, is, is asking for help. And I still haven't really figured out how to integrate it, except I do have a now like a morning ritual of just ask, you know, putting the Holy Spirit in charge, doing like a prayer. Mm -hmm. But I would love to sort of, I wish I could kind of have an ongoing thing throughout the day where I um, ask for help and just seeing things differently, like show me how this could be different. Um, show me how I can choose peace instead of this, that kind of stuff. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm just thinking about that because like I haven't gotten there yet. I've, I've gotten to, I really should have a time in the morning when I... Um, ask you know the holy spirit to be in charge of my yep. day and well sit down i'm obviously more morning. special than you <laughs> surely <laughs> <laughs> um These yeah so just take their spirituality too serious <laughs> <laughs> yeah i because I really, I do like the idea of kind of like orienting because I, part of the difficulty with the, the lesson, the leak weekly lesson is like, I'll for, I'll be like, oh wait, what is it? What is it? Oh wait, I need to go look. And then I'll be in the middle of the lesson and be like, I can't go look right now, you know? And, or I'll just like completely forget because I'm in the moment with my student. Write but, it on your hand with a Sharpie. Oh, I used to write it and no. put it in my phone. Like I, I'd make a, a paper. In fact, I think this is one of my lessons. Um, and I'd write each one, like, like what was, I thought was important about the lesson. I'd write it down, like on a piece of paper, I guess, and put it in my phone. So I always hmm. had it with me. Lesson, 20, oh, cool. lesson 27, you don't do it every hour, do you? 
That's an every third. I think it's okay. The one that I have right now is above all I want to see. Oh yeah. I would above write all that. else I want to see. I think that's, that's a every 30 minutes thing. Every 30 minutes. Then I set my Holy timer. Shit. I set my timer for every 30 minutes and I would pull that out and read it and then put it back and set it for another 30 minutes. And I would do that. That's maddening. Did you know that, Nathan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and it's like by the end of the day, you're like, okay, now it, like, it's in your brain by then. Mm -hmm. but, um, it's yeah. Hard, hard to do it's, Man, when I look back, I, sometimes it just worked out. Like those days when I was supposed to be like, um, I don't know, taking five minutes every hour, I was like, that's not going to work. And then I would get to work and then no one would be there. Everyone would arrive late for some reason. So then I would have my five minutes, like somehow it worked out. Oh, wow. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I have something to share with the field. Okay, oh, cool. so there's this yapping dog. My neighbor in the back. And you killed it? Dog. What's that? No, you it's killed been it? yapping for like a year, over a year now. Okay. And we can't like call them because they don't pick up the phone. We go to their house, they don't answer the door. Mm. So I thought, I just have to forgive it, forgive this dog. But every morning it yaps like at 6 30, 7 o'clock. And oh it's God. really loud. But mm. when I'm doing my my little um it, it's um Gary's Gary Renard's prayer to the Holy Spirit in the morning where you mm -hmm. give, you know, it's anyway, that prayer. Um, so it it's like a five minute, it's a five minute meditation with the, the prayer. So I do that, and while I do that, I do not hear the dog. I ah. didn't hear that dog for that those five minutes, and wow. I noticed that I noticed that a couple of times actually. I said, really? "That's awesome." I said, "Did you not not know hear the dog?" And he's like, "No, the dog was barking." Like I didn't hear the dog. <laughs> so That's so I, cool. I had to share that because the Holy Spirit does work. You know, he's he is working with us, and I mean, I just see it all the time, like with how my cancer how like the cancer is like um made me stop what i was doing and mm. just focus on something else and um i see miracles like daily if i mean everybody there's no order of miracle or problems there's no order of solutions to problems the holy spirit knows what the holy spirit knows much more than us mm. It's awesome. Angela, let's hear your forgiveness lessons. Hmm. My forgiveness lessons. My mind is blank at the moment. <laughs> but well, I, I got a lot of them, so don't don't make me feel like you don't have any. Oh, I definitely have some. I just like don't can't recall them at the moment. Um Maybe you can say some and then I'll share some after that. Maybe I'll remember. Oh, okay. Where do I begin? So, all right, I'm mostly joking, but there were two of them this week that I was like, oh my God. So that's another funny thing about me, like trying to run away and just work from home where I can't get my feelings hurt or whatever and, and um, protect myself and be safe is that then, you know, I, you, it doesn't matter. Like things just complexity always increases and that's the way the ego works and you fix a thing and another thing goes wrong. Right. So, so then, you know, I have to like kind of do more online marketing and like get more involved with Facebook. And then, so this person is attacking me online on Facebook recently mm. and she gets one of my articles taken down on a site and then she starts attacking me on another place. Oh, anyway, I guess this isn't a platform for me to like tell my whole story, but mm. that was like a big one this week. And yeah. I just like, it was at, at, now it seems silly looking back on it, but at the time it was like, I couldn't keep working. Like I was so just emotionally distracted at the time yeah. and it got resolved. But at the time I just, and I, it even took me a while to remember to forgive when normally I and do it pretty quickly, but I did get around to to forgiving, and I was I guess happy to have that opportunity. And I was definitely thinking at the time like, here's this person I've never fucking met in my life, and she's like going berserk. 
so uh, you know it must be one of those ones where like we like i don't know killed each other in in past lives and now mm. like we're doing the, doing the thing again mm. calling out for love maybe yeah really. <laughs> yeah yeah so i mean the thing that resolved it in the end was that she posted she posted another attacking comment on another thing that someone else shared and i said hey i don't know what's going on but maybe it would be easier if we just talked here's my phone number please call me wow wow and she and she never did and then another person posted something else supporting me right under that and she shut up so hopefully that's the end of it but it wow. seemed like yeah so that was the thing there was one more that i was going to share what was it um Oh, fuck. So I have to get, um, I went to the stupid orthodontist and I'm going to have to get, I know, I know, Angela. Oh my God. So <laughs> I don't know. Like I had braces in high school and I'm sure my parents paid a lot of money for me to have stupid braces and it was terrible and I hated it. And now I go back to the dentist and they're like, you know, you should see the orthodontist because of X, Y, and Z problem that you have. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So then I go to the orthodontist and they're like, yeah, you know, you should probably, it looks like you're going to need uh, oral surgery and braces. And I'm like, what? you guys, I did that already. That's what you do when you're a kid. And I did it. Now my teeth are perfect. So <laughs> no. So yeah, so it's going to, and I have been through this before. So this is obviously something I have to deal with in my life oh, i've been you learn your lesson the first time <laughs> i hear you that's your mouth you're making noises like a siren um <laughs> yeah so this actually happened to me four years ago when i changed dentist again and so i'm like well i guess really I'm fucking gonna have to deal with it yeah so i'm gonna have to probably get some fifty thousand dollar oral sur surgery oh. next year and like oh. get braces for two years and it's the kind of thing where you have to like put the braces on for a year and then they take them off so they can, you know, fracture your jaw and align it correctly. What? And then I put the braces back on. I know it's like, it's wow. ridiculous. So your jaw looks okay in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm beautiful. Are you kidding? So <laughs> no, if you, I don't know if you were to like do a um, close inspection of my jaw while i'm eating you can see that's a little bit off anyway oh, no. um so that was another big forgiveness lesson this week because i was sitting there in the room with these two people and it was like taking all of my forgiveness powers to not just you know lose my shit on them well it's okay to take care of your body that's what we learned right? yeah gotta take care of my body um yeah so yeah i was just i was looking at I was looking that doctor right in the eye while he talked to me and just, he had no idea probably, but I was forgiving him for every terrible thing he was saying to me. What kind of joking, forgiveness lesson terrible. is that though? Like, how do, you not <laughs> learn your, how do you not learn your lesson from teeth? Like, I don't get oh, that. I don't know. It's not like a teeth thing, but I, I definitely have some things in my life around physical pain. And that's mm -hmm. probably why I ended up marrying a, a um, personal trainer who has, you know, who, you know, her whole career is giving people sublethal exposure to stress and pain to improve their bodies. And, and I hate that. <laughs> yeah, Angela, some people, their cancer returns. Some people get rid of the cancer and then there's a lesson to be learned and all that. They don't learn it, come back. Because that's what, how we, we pay attention. It's like, okay, you've got my attention now. Um, yeah. You can go now. Like, I learned my lesson. I, I love you. You can go. You can leave now. But you want to learn your lesson. And yeah. I and it you. sucks because it's like yeah. we're sitting here and we know what the truth is. And yet we still have to. It's like we know it, but we don't believe it. You know, so it's like we still have to go through whatever the shit is. Like, I wish we could just read the book. And be like, all right, I got it. Chapter the next, <laughs> the next hour, Ken talks about that. I've listened to part of it, and he talks about how you have to be miserable, like you have to live in this world and go through the suffering and all that before you can 
um, let go of the ego. You got, you have to do that. You can't skip mm -hmm. that. It's that's yeah. in the next hour. Is it wasn't in this hour, right? Was it? Was it in this hour? No. Marianne Williamson calls that tomb time. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Like basically, that's your that's your period of crucifixion. Mm. He yeah, talks about I that in the next hour. Say it again. He talks about that in the next hour. His next, cool. this next hour. Yeah, I mean, I guess something that I'm dealing with right now is that my voice is coming and going kind of a lot. Like I, it's it's fine today, um, but uh, I think around in October I kind of lost it, like not completely ever but there's varying degrees of laryngitis and- Oh um, shit, that's huge. It's a problem. It's a problem for singing. Um, but it was, <laughs> it um, was happening right around when JR was dying and I wasn't sleeping a lot because I have like 63 students a week right now. And wow. I was also oh. driving up to Denton, I drove up there twice um, for his funeral and for his Friendsgiving. Um, and I didn't really have time to do that, but I did it anyway. And um, I don't know, this is a weird, I don't know how to talk about this, but like landmark, the landmark forum made me feel invincible. And so I thought that I didn't have to sleep. <laughs> and um, that was incorrect. And so that's sort of how I lost my voice and then the stress of everything. And so now it's just taking a while to come back completely, but I believe that it will, especially if I'm get better at sleeping, but it's just, I kind of don't like, it feels like it's coming and going longer now. And I have been like forgiving it, but it just seems like, well, I know physically in this world that the lesson I need to need to learn is sleep and don't overextend yourself. But as far as like the spiritual lesson for that, I don't know what that is. You ask know, like, ask your voice, like talk to your voice. That's mm. And just say, you know, what is it that I, you want me to know from this? I'm listening. I'm, I, I'll hear it. And ask okay. how the Holy Spirit asked, you know, to help you with that too. Because that's one of the things I've learned with, we meet with LaRue La Epler. Mm -hmm. And she helps us with stuff like that. And um, now Gary Renard. Mm -hmm. have sessions with him. And that's like when things That's interesting. Happen. That's, that's another tech. That's like a technique out of the. Heart life courses too is that you kind of you ask what the communication is that needs to be you know received at this time from that thing that's happening. Mm, mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. Makes sense. Yeah, it, it the Holy Spirit will talk to you, like it'll tell you, but you have to maybe have to ask. Yeah, I actually have talked to the Holy Spirit and his it is given me very specific messages before i just i think i forget yeah yeah like i'll remember i'll go oh that's right i can ask the holy spirit questions and it will tell me oh you, you froze up angela we can't hear you Yeah, that was a good one. Um, fucking hey. too bad Jared's not here. It's the first time I've had so many um, forgiveness lessons that could rival Jared. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. What's now he doing? What is Jared doing? Yeah. He's in Las Vegas. He's at a training seminar for business and uh. in the industry of network marketing. And there's like 10,000 people that attend. Wow. And, yeah. Eric Worry, he's a, a big trainer and um, really good. Yeah. So he's there now. Oh. Yeah. He's there. And he was here a couple of days before, came and visited me for a couple of days. And, you know, but this forum that we have here going on, uh, thanks to Jared, it's like Jared, I think, has the right perspective. He, he doesn't expect to recruit anyone, you know? He's just, 
Yeah, even though he does. What was that? He does. Even though he does. Well, yeah. That's, that's what I'm so, I feel so bad every time he's like, let's get some more people in here, Nathan, try to hold me accountable. And I do. And he contacts all these people. And <laughs> I don't know, he gets like 20 people to RSVP. And then I get on the call and it's just him and I. And I'm like, well, I guess it's just you and me. We're destined to do this together. <laughs> well, it's like, is this a different call? No, this was one where you were late, like five minutes or something. Oh, and, but okay. it was like I gotcha. he had been really trying to get some more people. I had invited two people. No one was to study a course in miracles. I mean, it's fucking depressing. But you know what? This is, <laughs> didn't Ken Wapnick say um, the course students start getting calculators and so they start putting spiritual meetings together and then they start counting the people that are getting on and they're yeah, exactly. And <laughs> you yeah, become I'm not like that. <laughs> And that's not even important. Like, I used to do that. I'm like, oh, man, my friend got on for one time, and then she never got on again, you know? That's not even, like, the point. It was so good for me to hear this last one, because it's like, yeah. so well if there's one or two of it, you know? Now yeah. Like yeah. I mean, it's funny, because I just, I sort of resist that sort of thing, and that's one of the difficulties I have with Landmark, actually. It's like, if I want to invite people, I will. Stop. Yeah, I know. Stop it. Exactly. Yeah. Every it's like everything else in our life though, we're supposed to like be recruiting people to some cause. So it's really nice to have just a place where like you don't have to do that, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's like I just wanna own I just wanna own like a business that's like uh an ice cream shop. Everyone loves ice cream. Like no ice cream shop has ever gone out of business ever. Or like a bar. That's better. Everyone wants alcohol. Anyway, sorry. Maybe that's not a great example. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so nice. Or, you know, if I wanted to start a group that was going to like have a lot of people and attract a lot of people, it would just be like, I don't know, something about like sex or dating or relationships, how to get what you want in the world. Anyway, we're like pretty far. Sorry, I went like way off on a tangent. What are you guys going to do now? <laughs> I was going to say, so next week is, uh, we're going we're gonna to do the uh, second, second hour, right? Or second chapter. They're not. But they aren't in hour. I was confused about that. Are they? Yeah, they're not the in Chapters hour. are like 30 minutes. So are we doing hours yeah. or chapters? Chapters. I thought we were doing All chapters. Right. Chapters make sense, I think. How are yeah. we doing hours? Not hours, not hours. Hmm. because I don't think I mean I haven't looked I haven't examined all of the different chapters but I think they're all different times so like if we did hours it would be like well should I do these two chapters together even though that's an hour and 10 minutes or should I do these two together because no no you're right like, you're right it makes sense yeah we yeah. don't we don't want to the, the ego lo loves us to complicate things <laughs> yeah we'll stick, stick with chapters yeah and this way we'll have a longer amount of time on this audiobook and we won't have to like yeah. code switch as quickly <laughs> yeah. or not code switch, but you know, change to a new one. I like it. I'm excited. Oh yeah, this is good. And I'm, I'm trying to read uh, the, the Buddha Jesus book in between all my other stuff in my, in my cancer project that I'm still working on trying to hmm. just do more, le learn more, be more that's, that's kind of what I'm that's what I'm I do these days <laughs> that's my, that's mm -hmm. my uh, form of activity mm -hmm. I still want to finish um, reading the actual book of disappearance of the universe which I have probably about this much left oh yeah before I start reading the Jesus finish book. it up I will Nathan gave me that book back in 2007 right Oh, wow. Yeah, sounds like it. Yep. That's awesome. I still need to talk to your dad about stuff. That'd be fun. Yeah, do it. Is your dad a course student, Nathan? Yep. Yeah, he was the one that uh, introduced me to Disappearance of the Universe. That is so cool. Yeah. I feel like I've been over to his house a few times and he's like, uh, but that was, I don't know, a while back. And he's like, Angela, have you ever heard of A Course in Miracles? And I was like, nope. <laughs> and then another time he, he asked, I was like, I think you asked me that question last time. I, can't. <laughs> I 
And then I there don't know go. what the conversation was after that. <laughs> Got erased. The ego erased it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna message him after we get off this phone call. Oh shit. I'm also gonna go hang out with Brandy, probably. What? Yep. These are friends from beginning of college. Or no, wait. Nathan and Brandy went to high school together. But I know Brandy. Oh, fuck. Nathan. Ask Brandy if she can um, fix my jaw from, from wherever she is now. Ah, okay. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I will. You can ask her too, you know. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yes, I could. I could. Okay, well, do we have more wonderful things to say about forgiveness and or this chapter of me. wonderfulness? Uh, I think we talked about that. I think we covered all my high points. I loved it. Yay. And I loved you guys and, and getting to visit with you and talk about it. Yeah, this was really fun. I really like it when it's just this super conversational. I guess that's one of the greatest things about it being a small group because you can just kind of go back and forth and it's not a problem. Yeah. Yeah, that's because yeah, Jared's so intimidating. No one can talk. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know I hope he listens to this later. Uh, that's fine. And then he's like, what? I'm intimidating? <laughs> I know. I don't know where, where he came from. I don't know. I know. You guys are so chill. <laughs> He's just a force of nature. I just, I don't know. Like, Jared's a force of nature. Jared, you're a force of nature. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to tell him to listen to the, the recording to the very end so he can hear what you said about him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love you though, Jared. You're awesome. <laughs> okay, so. Not here. Shall we all finish by saying good night and God bless? Yes. Yes. I'm going to say um, the Holy Spirit kisses your eyelids. That's great, too. Okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Good night and God bless and Holy Good Spirit night. kisses your eyelids. Oh, you don't say what I... Oh, you're saying it, too? Oh, okay. All right. Whatever. All right, cool. Bye, okay. guys. Bye, guys. Have a good Bye. week. Bye, guys.